Hi guys, and welcome to Amnesia Misconceptions. Now for those of you who have been following this blog for a long time, you'll remember I made a video similar to this way back. And it was essentially a handful of misconceptions I had picked out that I had seen in The Dark Descent and decided to address them. Now, I'm going to be doing a similar thing, but this time with Machine for Pigs. So, get ready to buckle yourself in because I've been waiting to talk about this game on this channel for a long time and I'm finally getting around to do it. However, I'm going to give each misconception its own separate video, therefore they're in bite-sized chunks and therefore easier to watch, digest, etc. So to start things off, I'll keep it simple and ask the question, did Oswald break his orb? Now this has sort of been making the rounds in the Machine for Pigs fandom for a little bit, and I wasn't sure where it came from or anything like that until I read it on the Amnesia Wiki. And for those of you who know me, and the Amnesia Wiki, we do not get along. <laughs> now, to be fair, going on there to, you know, find text related to documents, mementos, and flashbacks related to the games is fine, since they pretty much all check out. But when it comes to theories, explanations of the characters, speculation, take it with a huge grain of salt, because a lot of times the things on there are not exactly accurate. But back to the subject of Oswald's orb, the idea here is, is that Oswald, upon touching the orb in Mexico, caused it to split in half, and that's what gave birth to the engineer, I suppose? The only thing is, is that this doesn't really seem to be supported by what the game tells us. Now, before we go into directly into the game and what it says regarding the orb directly, I just want to give sort of a background, you know, context, basically. Context to Oswald's orb as compared to Daniel's, for example. Now, you have to realize that Machine for Biggs definitely does expand upon the lore of the orbs, for sure. I mean, it, it tells us that not only do the orbs have the power to, um, you know, take us to places beyond the stars, beyond the farthest reaches of the galaxy, or beyond our wildest comprehension, but also the fact that I suppose they can show us areas of time, like the future, which is insane to think about, like that gives them an immense amount of power. Now I guess what a lot of people are thinking is because Daniel touched uh, the orb in the tomb in Algeria and that caused it to break, therefore people think that Oswald touching the orb in Mexico caused the same thing to happen. The difference is that the two orbs from Machine for Pigs and from The Dark Scent are quite different. Um, not to mention the fact that the approach both protagonists are having towards the orbs is also very different. And I think this is something that a lot of people overlook, in that Daniel is, is obviously the most preferred protagonist of the Amnesia series, and he's definitely my favorite for sure, though Oswald is a really close second. But the idea is that Daniel, even though being the most popular protagonist of the series, he's really just the outsider, really. He's the most outside everything that's happening here. Now, if you think about it, because Justine and Oswald were both somewhat tied to the orb based on their family, because, you know, Justine's father may have been implied to have been involved with the orb, but she definitely had a soapstone, which is tied to the orbs, as seen in one of the stories in the Remember collection. Um, Oswald, of course, is tied to the orb because of his relationship to Alexander, being his great uncle, and therefore having the journals and information needed in order to go over to Mexico and find the orb. Now the interesting thing is to think is that not all orbs have broken once they were picked up. Because if we think about it, it's not just, you know, there's obviously this short story about uh, wire going into a tomb, taking the orb out, and that sort of thing. And of course it didn't break, nothing like that. And of course you think, okay, yeah, it's Warb though. He knows the most about the orbs more than anyone else on the planet probably. So that's not really a big surprise. But the fact is that we also get information that Agrippa apparently had an orb. The one that Alexander took. But Alexander ended up breaking it because he tried to, I guess, use the orb, but his spell or the something he was doing wasn't done yet and therefore it broke. But basically, it broke when Alexander used it, therefore Agrippa was able to take an orb and it was fine. So it doesn't happen to everybody. So it is curious why it happens to Daniel. There's 
plenty of reasons it, it could have happened. I don't know for sure. It's a whole plethora of things and that's for a whole nother video. But the thing is, is that Daniel's the outsider. The orb doesn't know what it, his intentions are. The shadow ends up following after him, the whole deal. Now, Machine for Pigs, there is no shadow. Oswald's not being hunted by the shadow because he didn't technically steal the orb. The orb might have considered something like that for Daniel. Well, then again, it might have also been considered that since it broke, but it's not that case in Machine for Pigs because Oswald got the vision, but his soul bonded with the orb. And therefore, that deep of a bond, it doesn't make sense that the orb would break. Now, with all that in mind, why don't we take a look at the times that the orb is directly referenced in the game, both in text and in flashbacks. Let's look at the notes in Machine for Pigs first that mention the orb, and there are three of them. The first one is dated February 14th of 1899. Among other things, Oswald is talking about the Mexico trip, and near the end of the note he says, I have told the children, truly, this will be an extraordinary adventure. If those old stones hold the financial benefits I predict, it will be merely the first of many. The next one is March 15th, 1899, and he mentions the orb throughout the entire note. And so he writes, Curled into my bunk, all sick and sweat-ridden, they clean my room about me, but I can only hear the voice from within that gentlest of stones. It sings to me, and I dream of a great machine. We will build a new world from the ruins of the old. We will plant flowers in the rotten rib cage and let them grow to hold the sky from falling. I remember how it whispered to me as we rolled sick and heaving. And I remember when we pulled into Southampton and we both wept, for it was as every bit as much a desecration as had been sung to me. And then we came to London and I set it upon the mantelpiece and went into the house and gathered the servants and set on recrafting them. And then I went into the garden and buried those tiny, shattered skulls under the weeping bulges of the rhododendrons. The final note that mentions the orb is on April 30th, 1899. And this is the note where Oswald mentions having retrieved a body of the grunt that we know from the Dark Descent that he got from Brennenberg. And in the note he writes, It is difficult to ascertain whether this unfortunate is the recipient of some barbarous surgery, or was both deformed and an attempt to force his gnarled body into some semblance of humanity was made. What he is I cannot tell, but I smell the orb upon him, and I suspect my great uncle's presence in his curious condition. Now let's listen to the flashbacks that mention the orb. This way, Papa. Come and see. Will it hatch? Can we take it home? Yes, my darlings. Of course we can take it home. This is the only instance that I can see where people get the implication that the orb might have cracked or broken apart based on what one of the twins says here. But the fact remains that no other in-game evidence suggests that this is the case. Of course they bring up the idea of it possibly hatching because they think it's an egg of some sort. In fact, it's more than just the orb that's referred to as an egg in Machine for Pigs. Oswald refers to the engineer as the egg of his soul. He also refers to the center of the earth as the egg of the world. When Daniel had his vision from his particular orb, he directly mentioned holding the pieces of the broken orb, and there was a whole bunch of journal entries about the fact that he was trying to put it back together. There was nothing about that in Machine for Pigs. The fact is, even though it was mistaken for an egg by the twins, that doesn't mean there was going to hatch. And yes, it's considered the egg by Oswald in many ways, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it had to break apart in order to work and for it to bind to his soul and also be functioning inside the machine definitely requires it to be one solid piece, as the orb wasn't functioning properly when Alexander had broken his orb to use for the ritual, or even when Daniel had broken apart his orb. Therefore, for the orb to work properly in the machine and for its purpose, it had to stay one solid piece. Listen, Papa. Hold the egg to your ear. You can hear the sea. And, emerging, I raised my head to an uncaring sun, and I cursed this world of pain and despair. This civilization built on the ricketed bones of the unfortunate, on the greed and swell of mammon and empire. Cradling a stone egg in my jacket, I kissed my children farewell, and I crawled my way home. 
is no implication whatsoever that the orb broke in any of those. Now you might be thinking, okay, but what about near the end of the game? There is an instance where you see the twins' dead bodies hanging over the chair where Oswald dies, and before them is a hanging piece of the broken orb, and that proves that the orb split. However, if you actually take a closer look at that sequence at the end of the game, those aren't pieces of the orb. That's actually hanging hearts. Hearts hanging before the twins' bodies because obviously they were sacrificed to the orb as textile. Therefore, that makes reasonable sense. However, if you do look in the original concept art based on the original ideas for the story, you'll see a drawing of an Aztec temple with an orb suspended over the top of it. But the orb is fully intact. There's no split whatsoever. And that's another implication, the fact that it doesn't make sense for Oswald's orb to have broken. He bound with it. He pretty much became involved directly with the orb, and therefore much different than Daniel's relationship with his orb. Therefore, to the question, did Oswald break his orb? The answer is no. Oswald likely kept the orb intact the entire time. So thank you guys for watching. This is my first of hopefully a series I, I plan to make, and I hope you guys keep tuning in and enjoy them. See you next time.